Thanks for joining us once again on the channel. Any minute now, the project is going to arrive. It is a giant motorhome that we're gonna make it four wheel drive. Should be here any second, come on. Are we racing? Be a race? No. <laughs> I want to see the foot price. Okay, I know what these are. Hair bag. Oh, it's accession. Yep. Yeah, unpack them. You throw all the packaging away, we'll have a fire lighter. Make sure there's no small parts in there. Yep. No, there's two of them. Yeah. These must mount something. Yeah. You know what I'm not seeing? Directions. Huh. I wonder <laughs> if there's directions in there. Look. For my forward. <laughs> That's for the snowmobile engine we're going to put in the thing. Oh, boy. Directions. Look at it's a lovely folder with pictures and everything. And color too. You know what that means? We can keep drinking. <laughs> oh yeah, this is great. Alright, well, all the work that it took to do this, there's there's quite a bit of work here. This is wonderful. This actually makes everything okay. Oh, it even shows you the transfer case, but they pulled the output shaft. Why did they do that? That's a different train, I think. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. We'll get there. Okay, no more you got. Oh, I don't know. I got, I got lost in the information. <laughs> I'm excited for directions. Merry Christmas. <laughs> that's, that's a big load off. I thought I was gonna have to figure this shit out myself. Ah. Oh, oh. And more important. <laughs> yeah, you know how much these cost? <laughs> to get these couple things. Uh oh. I have a shifter. Shifter for the transport. This this here, this just holds it all together. Is that a U-bolt? That's not a my bolt, that's a U-bolt. That's a dad joke. <laughs> a very bad one. Oh boy. More directions. Diesel only. Oh, yeah, I remember this. We have to relocate the front, or the, um, the oil filter yeah, housing yeah, for yeah. the front drive yeah, shaft clearance. Like yeah. Good to know. I'm so pumped on the instructions. That makes life so easy. I wasn't afraid of trying to figure it out myself either though. I would have figured it out. Like my, my boss used to say, yeah, you might have figured it out, but how long? How long would it have taken? Look at this. I wondered about these. You know what that is? Yes. For the swing bar. Yep. No e fun. They even included Ford parts. Hey. That is a U joint bumper bracket or something. Yeah. Just look at this. It's, it's, I think it goes first and then yeah. that or something. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. Yep. This is pretty sweet. This is nice shit. <laughs> it's for high misalignment, they call it. That's the drag link. Mm -hmm. Man. It's light. And they, they already chased the threads of powder coating and put never seeds on it. That's good. Yeah, they... I'm starting to see the value in some of this shit. Oh, this one's heavier. Oh, yeah, this is the clamp one. Yeah. It's the steering on this is going to be very similar to that. 
Very similar to the Bronco. That's a nice looking, whatever it is. Don't bend it. It's double bolted. It must, it pivots out or something. That's something. Pull them out. No, yeah, we have restart, sir. I bet you got fun. Oh, I'm gonna have fun, all right. We're gonna assemble it. Oh, cool. For the, for this? Yep. This is heavy. All right, I see why it costs so much. You know the manufacturing it took to do all that shit? To figure out what you need? I, it's cast iron. I don't know what it's what it does, but it does something. Something heavy. Uh, I think it's a leaf spring plate. I think it matches these because this is on the front of the axle. Oh, just a bolt for the back. Here. What's it for? I know. No, I know. I said it's the mount for the battery. Oh, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> I got another one. Let's put it here. This spring or something. It must be bottom shock or something. It's nice stuff, though. I mean, yeah. they, they taped it off so powder isn't on here for some reason. Yeah, right? because you'd be woodling. You didn't want the paint burn. Yeah, right. You mean I got a weld? I better learn how. <laughs> For these, all these small loose parts, let's save like that box and one more. I yeah, yeah. We spent the majority of the evening getting this truck lifted up, starting to sight it all out. We laid out all the parts as you saw. So the next thing I have to do is we got to rig up that plasma cutter because the plug on the end doesn't match what I have in the garage. That has to work. There's a few things we have to burn. Um, and I need to get all this front bumper assembly off. And we also have to return some rims and tires because but he didn't screw it up too bad. These are awesome, aren't they? Um, we're gonna end up with about this physical size, but the issue is that this bolt pattern doesn't fit this bolt pattern. Thought he was doing the right thing, kind of rushed through it. You know how kids are with phones these days. So anyway, we're gonna get all this taken care of, all the running around, the plugs, getting set up, and then we'll start burning holes in stuff. I really love the fact that it comes with instructions because it gives you step by step. I was gonna cut all that suspension off first, but the instructions actually tell you, take the bumper and the sway bar, and uh, then you take this, which is your front spring hanger, and uh, you tap it up on the frame where they tell you to, and then you drill through the frame, and then you mount these, but that's the first step. So I have to drill like eight holes and I really need to drill at 16 holes because four on one side of the frame and then you gotta drill through the other side. Um, so I have to do all that right now. That's gonna be long. I'm not gonna make you watch all that. I'll come back when these are in and we'll go to the next step. After um, about two half days of nonsense, getting the plasma cutter set up, getting some electrical stuff changed, drilling out all of these holes, if you can see. There we go. Drilling out all these holes to accept the spacers for the front spring hangers. Getting these painted. I don't know why they don't come painted. That seems kind of stupid to me, um, but whatever. So yeah, we're ready now to run the spacers. I'll show you what I what I had to do for that here in a minute. But it's pretty early, and I already feel like I'm behind schedule. So chop chop.
Honestly, I think I can just give it a yank and it'll come out of there. Eric, you want a souvenir? <laughs> there you go, buddy. Is that news radio? What do you got there? Yeah. I thought you wanted me to start singing Frere Jaca. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, by the way. What's it mean? The what? Frere Jaca. You know the song oh, Frere, yeah, Frere, yeah. Jaca. Frere Jaca? Frere Jaca. Frere Jaca. Yes. Dormez-vous? Dormez-vous. You sleeping? You sleeping? Is that what it is? Dormez-vous sleeping. <laughs> I've been slipping for years, pal. <laughs> hmm. You see? You see, it's the little things that make you happy. This will hurt your fingers too, so. Yeah. All right. We're gonna get a cart. We'll get a cart and wheel it out of here. They're free? Yeah. All right, come on out of there. Yeah. All right, here we go. Bingo. Oh, that's very satisfying, let me tell you. <laughs> I remarked that it was very satisfying to get this out, and really it is very satisfying. The prep work to get to this point took a lot longer than you would think, but if you follow the directions of the kit that we bought, it's so simple. You just have to use your head, go slow, and uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty satisfying. So the next thing I'm gonna get this cleaned up, we need to get the front spring hangers. Remember the ones I drilled? We have to get those in. Then there's a template we use that will allow us to plasma cut holes for the rear spring shackles. And from there, we gotta do cross member cutting. We gotta remove the spring hats, the, the spring buckets that held the coil springs. Those gotta go, because we're putting in four shocks in the front. We also have to split the transmission so we can put the transfer case on. So there's a lot left, but the hard part in my eyes is over. Or is it? First new part. Red locker. These Ford steering boxes always come loose. I only have soft set glue, but better than nothing. just about ready to get these leaf springs put in but to clear the drive shaft and to make it an easier job now we have to relocate the oil filter and this kit comes with the bracket for it so of course it's a diesel engine and it's not brand new so there's oil all over it <coughs> and it's gonna make a mess when I get this taken apart I don't think I'll drain the engine obviously but it will drain any of the oil that's in the lines and it's gonna make a mess so I want to get this cleaned off first so that it's a little uh, easier to live with. We also have to relocate the fuel filter. 
has to be moved so I can get the hanger on for the shackle. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to let this soak a little bit. I'll get some rubber gloves, clean all this off, and I'll come back. We'll get this moved so I can get the bracket for the shackle and all that handled. Lovely clean work, this. This is a template. It is, uh, uh, it locates the rear spring shackle holes for the frame. And uh, I have to bolt it in and slap it up and cut some holes in the side. We were gonna use a plasma cutter for it, but the truth of the matter is that plasma cutter, it's not great. It makes a hell of a mess. And um, the amps for this panel inside the garage, we got it all hooked up and it keeps blowing the circuit. So forget it. I'll use a hole saw. And a right angle drill like olden times and uh, it'll go right through no problem at all so um, once this is in I have to burn in the shock towers the rest of the way and burn in the spacers and uh, we can put the freaking springs on it the oil relocation bracket uh, or oil filter relocation bracket was tough that, that was tough took several hours so anyways onwards and upwards God, you got dirty already. Fucking dirty. Get over and do an interview. <laughs> I don't know what camera. No. <laughs> I don't know what the camera was. So where are you from? My, my mom. <laughs> what made you want a four-wheel drive this? <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't like the camera. <laughs> A bar. Yeah, Yours is a little tight. Yeah. New suspension under your truck. Does it work? Yeah. I'm the best of all the rest. He's a little stiff. Did it move? It flexed? Yeah. I still have to tighten up a bunch of this stuff and of course get it in alignment. I'm gonna give it a hillbilly tape measure alignment first so I can test drive the truck. But um, it'll go into a, a shop and have a proper laser alignment to make sure that the track bar is centered in the vehicle and you know, they, they make sure it's right. So it drives smooth. We're still waiting on the shocks. They should be here any minute. Um, I still have to put the six inch lift springs on the back of the truck and also new shocks there. We got to take the battery boxes out so I can access the spring shackle bolts um, to change those. And I still have the transfer case to put in. Once I put the transfer case in, I can measure the front drive shaft, measure the rear drive shaft. The springs will be ready. This thing will be on the road. A couple more days. Uh, technically, this took two guys four days is what it's been. I'm not going to tell you how many hours in each day. It's none of your business. <laughs>
Hi, my friend. Bond is the best. He did a good job. That guy did a good job. He did all that. Yeah. I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah. Nothing without you. <laughs> Guys with a lift and a real TV show are spoiled. Come spend a couple of weeks over here. That'll cure your sissy ass. press but really light <laughs> okay there you go now I gotta get that e-brake hub off so I can count the splines because the guy that sold us this kit said it's 31 and guess what now he says oh it's 34 oops sorry oops yeah okay oops yeah well, whatever, dude. Fucking <clears throat> oops. I'll oops ya. <clears throat> Always be careful when it says rust free because it depends on where you live. This would be considered not that bad. Anyway, back over to this nonsense. Ugh. So yeah, there's the there's the hub, the e-brake hub. It came off with a little bit of coaxing. But that there is what I have to count and verify. And I realize now we are on our own. And you know what? It's better that way because then you don't rely on anyone but yourself and you're not disappointed when someone fails you. So yeah, we'll chalk it all up as experience and let me count these and I can get out of here. So where are we today? I can tell you. We have the rear axle. The shocks are unhooked, the brake line is unhooked, which incidentally crumbled into bits when I touched it. So this is good timing to get back here and do some service. But we gotta change those leaf springs and See there, they're hanging free right now. So I just have to cut these bolts and this axle will drop down onto jack stands and a jack. And uh, then I can roll it out of the way. When I roll it over, I'll start to work on the springs, getting them down because these have to go in there. Um, this would be another deal where <laughs> it'd be nice if I had a, a person, um, but I don't, so slow and steady. With all of the U-bolts cut 
and the axle now lowered onto the ground. It's in these car dollies. Um, the pinion might drag, so I'm gonna do something about that, but really the tough part, or one of the tough parts, is way up there, the top of that shock, is buried, so I'm gonna have to cut those off and leave a piece up in there. Uh, the new shocks came with brackets, so I'll be able to get that handled. But I think my best bet is to try and drag this out of here, but man, I don't know what that weighs, <laughs> one ton axle, but it's a lot, and the ground isn't exactly smooth. Um, but I think if I use a bit of force, I'll get it out of there, and then I can cut those shocks down and begin to remove these leaf spring hangers and shackle bolts. Well, I'll leave the hangers, but you know what I mean. I gotta get those out of there, so hang on a second. There were a few cuss words, a bit of swearing and a bit of prying and a bit of, did I mention swearing? But yeah, there. this side is in. I just gotta go over there, get that side out, and then we can start putting the axle back under it. Let's run over to the other side, see what that looks like. Don't trip and fall on anything. Yeah, so I need to do the bolts came right out of this one. So now I just gotta lower that down, which believe me, that spring pack is heavy. I'm gonna come over here and lift this up. And when I lift this out of this shackle, this thing will probably just fall forward because the pipes are there, so it really can't go anywhere. So that's pretty much how I did the other one. <laughs> um, it's on the pipes, so it really shouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Let's pick it up and get it out of here. How far off I am. Of course, they make a tool for this. And when you're up in a lift, you can grab onto that spring and bend it down and it'll line up. But I'm on the ground and I'm by myself. I got the other one in this same way. Um, I don't recommend you do this because honestly, it's not what I would consider safe. Yeah. 
yeah that's kind of how i did it except i had a better i had a better wedge <clears throat> going to hold one piece of this yeah it's not doing it it's it's not bending it in the right place I'll never get that down so that's fine I'll move everything camera off yeah trust me when I tell you you don't want to see how I did that it involved me sitting on a bar and um, pushing with two jacks and pretty much making it a little sketchy if at first you don't succeed change your approach and uh, that's all I did was just move the leverage points around a little bit and I was able to get it I just need to snug these up because you don't want to tighten suspension until this thing's sitting on the ground But at least now it's not coming apart. I rolled the axle back out. I got both leaf springs on. That's good. Um, I don't have the right size U-bolts because apparently there was a mix-up again. Um, <clears throat> next time I'll be I'll be sure to order everything myself rather than going through three people. But yeah, we got them on, reasonably cleaned up for the day. We'll get back to it tomorrow. There we go, I have the axle under it now. Um, I just have to basically manipulate it, manipulate it into position. And it's sort of balancing right now, so it won't be too bad. But um, yeah, I gotta get that in there, get the U-bolts on, and then I can get this thing off all its jack stands and back on its wheels do the transfer case, the brake line, then I think we're good. Um, drive shafts, but that's coming in a day or two. All right, a lot has happened in a few seconds. Like, the wheels are on. There's no weight in the back of this truck, but a six inch suspension lift really does lift the truck. But the good news is, I can get underneath it now easy and it's no longer on jack stands and the back of it is now about two foot off the ground so that is not your normal trailer hitch but just to see it on its wheels is making me really happy there's another thing let me show you so this thing is what we had changed this is the input shaft of the transfer case and uh, that got dropped off a few hours ago and I was able to get the transfer case secured and roll it under the truck. This old school transmission lift, which is really good by the way. It works real well. But more importantly, look at that. It's a transfer case. Front flange. That's going to go over top of this and it's going to end up down there on the front axle. And then it's now connected to the transmission and this is going to go from right there all the way back to that. There's a carrier bearing in the middle. Um, and right up there, see those See those two holes? That's where the shifter mechanism is gonna mount. And we're gonna pull back, I don't know if you can see from here. There's those two holes. And there, right there, is your selector. Um, there's, I have a, a, a lever and a plate, and we're gonna drill a hole up there through the floor for the mechanism 
basically shift lever that will move this thing from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. But I'm just super pumped because that's awesome that I got that in there by myself, I might add, with a bit of blocks and kind of the way I did this whole thing on the ground. Um, a lot of people would probably say that this job is best suited for two or three guys um, over a few days with a lift. But uh, I would tell them, you're right. <laughs> but anyways, I'm making it happen. And realistically, I only have a little over a week in the thing. It's not terrible. But all right, I got to get all those bolts in. There's some bolts that aren't in. I got to get it tightened up. Um, the selector in, the floor marked, brake lines done, um, drive shafts measured, sway bars hooked up. There's no sway bar there. And as you can see right there, this sway bar needs to get drilled. See there, <laughs> there's mounts that go up to the frame. The hard part's over. We got a transfer case, we got a front axle, we got a rear suspension lift. Uh, now there's a bunch of little details which I'm going to try and do real quick. So hang in there. Had about an hour rain delay, uh, but the sun's back out and of course everything's dripping. But I'll be able to get under there and do a few other things like I've got most of the brake line done, I got to mount the shocks, I have to drill the bag holes. Uh, for these brackets, but yeah, I got a ton of stuff to do. I'll see you under there. That'll slow you down. I worked out in the rain the other day. I worked out in it today until I was wet. I got the rear shocks on. I got the rear airbags mounted. I don't know if you can see them in there. Probably not. might seem crazy to work on something in the rain, but when you spend 30 years in ditches uh, doing plumbing, this ain't so bad. It's just water. It's clean water. I got to get these in. Um, I want them done today. That's, that's the end of my list. I got two more on the other side. enough for today. I have what I needed to do accomplished. Um, I'm kind of wet and a little bit agitated, <laughs> but I, I'm glad I crossed off all the items I wanted to get done today. So, all right, let me uh, clean this up. Hopefully it won't rain tomorrow. Right now I got the drive shafts back from Henderson and uh, of course they look great. They're going to bolt right in and then I have sway bar bolts, bleed the brakes, hook up the ABS sensors, and put the batteries back in it and I can start this truck and move it under its own power, which will be exciting. Hang on a second. So underneath this truck, where I seem to have spent an awful lot of time as of late, we've got the tail of our transfer case, the carrier bearing, the infamous Henderson driveline stickers, which you probably can't see from there, but We've got the Fabtech rear shocks. We've got the overload airbags, the new leaf springs. The back end is ready to go. And up here, that's our double carden joint for the front drive shaft, which they recommend we do. Of course our Henderson sticker and then there's that awesome front end. I still have to do the sway bar as you can see hanging down there but I'm excited this thing is almost ready to roll. I gotta bleed the brakes, put the batteries in it and I can start it. Let's go!
here. Got to buy a mile. Will it do a burnout? That's what I want to know. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> I'm you, sure it will. You're sure it is in the right place? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This old guy from Texas, when it gets real hard to see outside, he would say, visibility is about down to damn near zero, which is real fast is, visibility is about down to damn near zero. Hey, it's turning. Things are happening. Your ABS light went out. Oh, good. What? It's slow. He's warm up, he needs warm up. I'm not pushing on the pedal very hard. No. 1800 RPM. Hey, uh, your ABS light went out. That's gone. Yeah. Good deal. That means it likes the way I put the sensors in because I had to wire them. The mm. plugs were different. Okay. I had to wire those. It worked. Mm. 86,000 miles on a diesel engine. That's like not even broke in yet. So we think we have a front end alignment issue where they're not pointing in the right direction because the front tires are kind of warm. So we're gonna go up here and slowly take it on back. I'll let you know what we find out. So what we've done is change the transmission mount because it was bouncing. And also there was some sheet metal underneath that was making noise. And uh, we're taking it out on the test drive. Scary. Oh, yeah. They come flying through oh, here. 55, 60 miles an hour. Scary. Top bus here's warm. And just warm up the trust machine a little bit. The business. We see? I'm listening to things. Oh. I don't want to hear nothing. Okay. It feels fine so far. The front's not pushing anymore. It does feel like a big giant school bus. <laughs> Man, the brakes are good. <laughs> it's smooth as glass right now. Yeah. We're not hitting any bumps. I know it's very asphalt. Yeah. You can hear the turbo whistle. Good, huh? No noise. Oh, no noise. It would. That's where it did it last time, coming down the hill as soon as I let off. Yeah. With most of the bugs worked out of that thing, we got it pointed north towards Michigan and got on the road. This particular truck is on its way back to get proper wheels and tires. It's going to have its interior finished out and it's getting a full paint job and it's going to get black ladders and black mirrors. This thing's going to be an amazing, aggressive piece of equipment. A build like this is challenging, tiresome, arduous. But most of all, it's fun and it's very satisfying to watch this thing drive. And yes, it made it the four and a half hours all the way back to Michigan. And we're going to chalk this one up as a win. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. The next couple of videos are going to be with the Bronco and the Green Haro Hauler. There's a lot of stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Thanks. I'll see you soon.